Hey guys, how's it going? Mike the Tech here. Welcome to part 3 of our game salad tutorial. Uh, in this part of our game salad tutorial, we're going to add obstacles and a way to win the game, as well as a randomizing effect to make our obstacles a little less predictable. So, um, I'm going to add in some graphics here in our library, in our media tab. We're going to hit the plus sign, and I have uh, some graphics here from Kenny.nl that we used earlier in the tutorial. So I'm going to grab uh, in the meteors folder this uh, meteor brown big so I open uh, yes and here is our meteor now to create an actor at that exact size 101 by 84 we can drag this in just to the left of the background and um, then we can move it into a room that way we don't overwrite anything and go back to our actors tab and rename it meteor perfect so now we could actually uh, delete that if we want to and then uh, drag it in properly and uh, place them around our scene. So let's put a couple of these in. That's good. A few more. All right, that looks all right. So, now uh, when we hit play, nothing is really going to happen uh, because these meteors are all going to be static. Uh, if I move around, it's really easy to get past them because none of them are moving. And they're also kind of uh, not fun to look at because they all kind of look the same and it's not really interesting. So, uh, let's kind of change that up a little bit. We'll open up our meteor and we'll see our prototype here. And let's add, uh, we won't even use a rule in this case. Let's go ahead and go to our functions, or behaviors actually, I should say. And let's find the rotate function. There it is. And we're going to leave it counterclockwise. And instead of just setting a speed for all of them, uh, let's go ahead and um, randomize this a little bit. So let's go to our E right here for expression editor and then go to functions we're gonna look for random and now we can choose a minimum and a maximum number so we saw that 90 was the default speed uh, so let's go ahead and figure uh, from 20 to about and let's just choose 90 so between 20 and 90 is how fast these are gonna spin and let's see how that looks cool so some of them are spinning quickly some of them slowly and actually I think I could let them go a little slower even so let's go and change this to zero cool so now we don't want them to just be stationary we want them to kind of float around the scene so um, what we can do with our scene is wrap our X coordinate that way if it goes off to the side uh, kind of like Pac-Man, it'll jump off to the other side and give the effect that there's another one coming at us, even though it's really the same one. So we'll leave X uh, checked just for, for this game. I think that would make it interesting. And let's go ahead and use our move behavior. And we'll say we'll move in a random direction too. So we'll open up our expression editor. We'll go to functions. We'll look for random and we can move in any direction from 0 to 360 degrees so I'll choose 0 to 359 because we don't use 360 really even though it does work uh, we'll choose 0 to 359 and at a speed of we don't want it moving too fast so we'll delete this and we'll say random again because we want to make everything dynamic and interesting we'll say 0 to a maximum of 30. All right, so now we want that relative to the scene because if we have it relative to the actor, then as it's rotating, it's going to kind of uh, move in different directions and it'll give some weird effects. So we'll change this to scene and let's just test this out. Great, so now we can see some of them are moving in different directions. Uh, that one is coming back this way. Uh, they're all kind of moving around, right? So they're not super dangerous right now uh, we can probably up the speed on some of them if we'd like uh, to say 110 
That way some of them will just move a lot faster and be a little less predictable. And we can also add an extra one up here uh, just for good measure. Perfect. So now what happens when we run into these? Uh, right now nothing happens. We could go right through them and it's not really that hard of a game, right? So uh, let's make something happen. So let's close this and let's add a new rule. And in that rule, we will say when there's a collision with the actor of type meteor, what are we going to do? Destroy self. So if you run into a meteor, you're gone. That's it. So rule collide with meteor. Perfect. Now, um, we need a way to proceed to the next level or win the game, right? So let's go back to our library, our media library, and we'll go to our PNG folder and add this star from the power-ups folder. So here's our star. We'll drag it in again. Uh, by dragging it off to the side, it retains the size values, the, the, uh, the default width and height. And we can place this right here. So that way, once you reach that star, you win. So I'll type win. And what we can do is in the player section, we'll create a new rule. And the exact same way we um, made a collide with our meteor, we're going to make a collision with our win. And instead of destroying our actor when we collide with it, we're going to change the scene to the next scene without an add. Right? So now we have collide with win. And if we can make it up here, oops, crashed. So let's kind of sneak by over here. Oops, we'll wait for this guy to pass. See, it's, it's already kind of interesting. And I collided with it. So I hit the star and it jumped to the next level, which since we only have one, it just repeated the same one. But uh, yeah, so now we have some actual interactivity and a way to move on to extra levels. Um, in the next uh, video, we'll add more to this. But for now, that's it. So thanks for watching. Sorry for the weird outro. Um, if you're seeing this in the wrong order, just a note, I had originally recorded this once before, but I made a mistake in it and I didn't want to confuse people, so I decided just to unlist that one and re-record it uh, the right way. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Peace.